Hello friends, welcome to the show. If today is your first time visiting with us, we want to extend you a very warm welcome and invite you to look over our over 300 videos as we're confident you're going to find something that you both enjoy and find useful. If you've been here before but you have not subscribed, do subscribe, it really helps us a lot. If today is your birthday, we want to extend you a very happy birthday. So stick around and see what we have in store for you this week. So this week, we're going to take this. You can go out in your backyard and, and cut a piece of uh, a, a tree that is not uh, healthy, but any piece of wood will do. And we're going to try to make a gift box out of it. So we have not tried this before. So let's have fun together and see if we're going to succeed. Okay, so we've placed what would be the bottom on our uh, drill press and we are going to drill a hole which will allow us to put whatever nice surprise we have in this little box. So we're going to do that and we'll be right back with you.
Either our Fosner beads are too dull or this wood is very hard but we had to switch to a keyhole bead to continue our cut and of course now we have to get the remnants of the keyhole off so we're going to use a chisel and we're going to try to uh, break this off without breaking the bottom of the, the base off, right? Right. Okay, that's boring. Nothing exciting there. Oh, it's coming. Hey, don't hit the camera. How did you say it's coming? Don't hit the camera. Why do you say it's coming? It's not coming. I saw it moving around. Honey. Well, I'm just creating small wedges now. Funny you. All right, we're going to be with you when we fr when we actually finish this process. So this is going much slower than we anticipated. We hit the mother of all hardwoods, I think. But slowly but steadily, we are getting there, as you can see. We're using chisels and we're using screwdrivers and we're using everything in our disposal to make this uh, break apart, right? Yep. We're whacking it pretty good. We're <laughs> whacking it. Apparently, we are whacking it. Oh come on, you know you want to break. I've it never It is given us a run for our money for sure. And that's saying a lot since this was firewood. Yep. And that told you that sometimes firewood is really good quality wood. Right? And it will last a long time in a fire, wouldn't it? I don't know, that's a long time to burn. That's hard wood takes longer to burn yes. than soft wood. Yep. Alright, this is as exciting as watching grass grow, so... Yeah, but we're making progress. See? Awesome! It's very gratifying to see that stuff come out of there. I don't think people want to see me chiseling. I think they want to see it flexing those muscles. Finding the right fulcrum. You go all sciencey on me now. Get all angly and such. So we'll try to finish this and, and we're going to be back with you for the next step. All right, friends. And we cleared all the meat that would make the opening from our base. And now we're going back to the Fosner bit, but this time we're using it for a different purpose. Not to make the hole, we did the hole using the keyhole, so, but to make the bottom nice and smooth, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe. Is it too high? No, it's not too high, it's just uh, not centered. It gets to be centered. Okay. Apparently it's still not centered. What in the world is happening? All right, we'll fix our technical problem. We'll solve our technical problem, so let's give it a go.
Yeah, it's almost there. Needs a little more. I think it, I don't know, should we take it off, you think? You probably hit bottom. <laughs> no, I didn't hit bottom. I, I mean the bottom of where we got with this. Okay, we'll show them when we're done. I think it looks good, just looking from this. Let's look at it. Oh, but if I have to put it back again, it's a pain. It's all right, we'll figure it out. No, it needs a little more. We can, don't you think we can sand it? Or do something with no, the we cannot uh, sand rotary it. to smooth it well, out? Well, but we can smooth it out with this. Why use, why make our life more difficult than we have to? So, we thought that we would line our little gift box with some red felt for Valentine's Day. And what we have here is the top of the box that we haven't quite finished preparing yet. But we've also got a, um, a piece that we cut that'll sit inside the whole of the box. So what I'm doing is I'm using this as a reference for the size of the felt that we're going to put inside, which will sit like this. But as you know, I've got to make it shape because you see there's overlapping pieces here. So what I'm doing now is I am cutting some triangles out of the felt to allow it to close up that gap without overlapping. Not precise. I may have to make some more adjustments. All right, folks, and we'll be right back with you. All right, so we're going to use a, a spray adhesive to attach the felt to our uh, opening there. And of course, we read all the necessary directions. And we know exactly how to do this, right? Well, we're going to try it. No, it or not, here we come. That has a smell to it. Yes, it does. That looks very nice. All right, and then quickly before it completely sets up, I'm going to cut the edges off. How fast does it set? I don't know. We like to live dangerously here in the Urban Homesteading Channel. We don't know how fast it sets, but we'll do it before it sets. We make an educated guess and go from there. Not an uneducated guess? No. I think it looks very nice. Oh. 
like this. Yep. So now we just have to glue the um, this to the, the top so it'll sit right down on there and kind of hold its place. All right, we'll be right back. Then. So we finished with the construction of our box and we just have a couple of more things to do. We did create a, a lip so the, the box when we close it, it is nice and as you can see, it stays there, it doesn't move around. And we just attach this using hot glue, nothing really special there. We, the felt came out very nicely and now what I'm about to do is actually put some poly on the piece and we're going to show you the final piece. I don't want to do it there though. Okay, so, so I decided to put a little bit of poly on the project. On your tool. What tool is that? This one. And this will protect the, the piece. Right that way. I think we've got all of it, no? All right. And this is our finished product as you can see and we'll be right back all right folks and now our piece is uh, finished with a poly and it has a very nice finish on top and as you can see the the lid is secure enough that you can move it a little bit not very tight but it's secure enough that you can move it a little bit okay all right and our, our box is ready to present to our sweetheart for Valentine's with a nice gift for her in a very very unique uh, way, don't you think? Mm -hmm. Would you like that for Valentine's? Yes. Happy Valentine's. Thank you dear. <laughs> what? You want me to close it again? Okay. And that can make a very nice piece, a conversation piece. You can take it to your office or, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is our show for today. Thank you for watching us. And this is a, a Valentine's gift, bo gift box we made out of a branch, in essence, right? Mm -hmm. Again, in line with what we do in this channel, it cost us absolutely nothing other than our labor, which was admittedly much harder than we thought because this would end up being probably the hardest wood we have ever worked with. It was very hard. So, should we make jokes about hard wood? No, this is a family channel. We cannot do that. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Urban Home Studying Channel. And if you did, please smash that like button. If you didn't, the other button works as well. Please make sure you smash it twice. Share, like, subscribe and comment. Let us know what you would like to see. And we're going to see you again with another project next weekend and with some fun video midweek. From the Garage Wizard, Mrs. Wizard, and the Urban Homesteading Channel, we bid you a great week.